You were just a little miniature little monkey butt. I know, but you guys were just babies, and now look at you. You're over here doing multiplication and stuff. I don't want you to be a baby. I'm glad you're going up. I know. You go to kindergarten, you go poop by yourself. You don't always flush it, though. That's <laughs> cool. Did you head home, you butt? Ooh, uh, hello. Hello, love. It's 8.44 in the morn. It's cold as I don't freaking know what outside, but an exciting day will be had today. I started working as soon as the kids left. Uh, oh, because we got Nala's new video up, so if you're interested in a gift guide for teen and tween girlies, she has it on her channel. It's actually a great gift guide. I mean, in my opinion. And then some of you are like, oh, but what if someone likes this? Or what if someone likes this? She actually has good suggestions because obviously Jaden likes different stuff. And it's not like boy, girl per se. So uh, she'll be answering that later. But Nolly Polly is in Chicago right now or heading that way because she's gonna go see Hamilton. And what do we have in common? I am also going to Chicago today, but I'm going my bestie. And uh, Jaden was offered to go see Hamilton. He didn't want to go, and I was not going to push him because the tickets were like, I don't even know how much this field trip costs. It was a lot. So when he was like, I don't want to go, I was like, <laughs> I love that for you. You get a steak. <laughs> you get a steak this week. The, the, the best steak $14 can buy. I am heading upstairs right now to go take a shower and put myself together because I need to be out of my house by 10.45. We, and Ashley, are gonna go to the last chapter bookstore in Chicago. And I'm excited about it because it's an all romance bookstore. I don't think it's gonna be like quite as vibey necessarily as like the ripped bodice in New York. Like that one looks very like, you know what I mean? Last Chapter Books Shop or Bookstore, whatever it's called. I think it's in Roscoe Village. It just opened a couple of months ago, so I can see that they're adding to it and they're doing, you know what I mean? But I look forward to seeing it kind of change and grow and stuff, but they have a ton of romance books. That's all they sell there. Wait, let me show you my little outfit. It's not my best, but me and Ashley agreed to be casual. <laughs> so, jeans, uh, torn between looking like a snack and eating one. This is from my cousin's shop. And then this freaking vest, which I just cannot get enough of it. And it fits my whole wallet and key in here, so I don't even have to carry a bag. And I can just keep my hands in here, and I, like, stay very warm. I also love these jeans. These are also from Hollister. Um, yeah, those jeans just fit really well. They fit Nala really well. They fit me really well. So, A+. plus, A plus work, Hollister. You did your thing. All right, I'm going to leave you guys right here, okay? Hello, gorgeous. I have been literally waiting all day to do this. I am so excited, except it's already 12 o'clock and I wanted to start this at eight, so I'm in like kind of a funky mood about it because I really wanted to be doing it. But whatever, that's life. It's 12.30 and I am going to make cookie dough. But I'm gonna just, it's dough day. Like all I'm gonna do is make a whole bunch of dough. I have like eight different recipes, so I'm pretty excited to get into it. I have all of my old stuff that hasn't expired, but that definitely needs to be used first. And then I have a whole bunch of new stuff that uh, like flour and sugar and brown sugar and yada, 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 all of the stuff that I'm going to need. And I'm doing, I think, triple recipes and everything. And then this morning, like I said, I thought I was going to start this way earlier, but I ended up having to work quite a bit today. This morning, I took out a whole bunch of eggs and butter because I normally need room temp eggs and I need softened butter. So we have, I don't know how many pounds that is. Four times eight, that's how many sticks it is. So quite a bit, and I'm excited to get started. So let me, I'm going to just walk you through each recipe, probably very simply, um, because it's gonna be a little bit repetitive. It tends to be like, oh, flour, sugar, butter, eggs, vanilla, myrrh, and then you just go from there. Because my Christmas party is so soon, instead of freezing it, I'm just gonna put it all in the fridge. And normally cookies, in my experience, I feel like they cook a lot better from chilled than they do just straight from you know being made. So we're gonna cook these cookies from being chilled, but I think we're gonna cook them all tomorrow and we're just gonna make all of the dough today. And if you're doing a lot, I highly recommend breaking it up because it is 
it's a lot to do them all in one day. So today's just gonna be a huge mess of all of these ingredients. This is what I have here. So obviously, like I said, a bunch of chips, a bunch of uh, flour and extracts. I have all kinds of extracts, all kinds of cocoa and heath and white chocolate and bittersweet chocolate and semi-sweet chocolate, a huge one of semi-sweet because that's a pretty popular one. I got that at Sam's. And then just a whole bunch of everything else, espresso powder and baking soda and baking powder and yada, 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 and lots of flour and lots of sugar because that is what makes all of this so delicious. And I'm not sure if I'll make this into two days because honestly with Vlogmas starting, um, my first few days, I'm sure you've noticed, have been a little cockeyed because I had a sponsored video, two sponsored videos, and um, it's been a little cockeyed. I will catch up. I'm hoping at least that I've been posting a video a day, but we're not quite up to speed, but we will be very soon. So in fact, maybe this video, no, probably not this video. Very soon we will be up to speed. So just rush the shirt. But I showed you guys these the other day when I bought them, but these are from Joanne Fabrics and these are where all the cookies are gonna go. And I forgot I had these. And these need to come over into the area with everything else. And my Holly, I forgot about that. Let's just take all of this over there. Oh, I went to the last chapter bookshop yesterday. And I didn't do the freaking haul. Maybe I should do it in this video. All right, so I have everything laid out. Okay, now we really have all the ingredients laid out. I am gonna sort these a little bit in a minute. But let me tell you what we're going to be whipping up today. So we're gonna do the best rolled sugar cookies. These are an all recipes recipe. I have used it for over 10 years. They truly are the best rolled sugar cookies. However, you need an icing recipe. I've gone through many icing recipes and my favorite was one I discovered last year because it made it really easy to decorate. I mean, those cookies looked incredible considering I have little to no talent in the art of decorating a cookie or icing a cookie. So I was really impressed with that recipe. It does call for a couple of random ingredients that you probably don't have on hand. One of which is vest vegetable. <laughs> vegetable glycerin and the other one is deluxe meringue powder. So these made a huge difference and thankfully I have them on hand. They're not expired or anything. So I will definitely be using those again this year. We're gonna make this dough, but I'm not gonna make these cookies until later in December, closer to Christmas. By the time all of these ones are gone, I'll make those ones and we'll have a fresh batch. And then the soft gingerbread cookies with maple glaze, so good, they're so, so good. That maple glaze is so good. And then you can put the little holly on it. Remember, our little holly and berries? We're gonna put that on it. I'm a little afraid that I'm gonna run out of butter. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. <laughs> so I'm gonna do the sugar cookies last because they call for a lot of butter and sugar and everything else. So I'm gonna do those last because if need be, I'll, I'll go get more butter. And then we have the butter pecan cookies. And I have a feeling that I have that dough already. I have soft gingerbread with maple glaze. Okay, so I have a lot of this. So maybe I'll just do a single batch of this. And then I have gingerbread crinkle cookies. So maybe I'll just do a single batch of this as well. Amazing. Yeah, I'll just do single batches because obviously I already have some dough here. This, um, this is from earlier this year. Or I could just double it and then, you know, just make the extra. And I plan on giving it all away, so. Looking forward to that. Oh, I printed this one on both sides. So smart. And then the best butterscotch cookies. This is my own personal recipe. That's why the recipe is a little jank, but <laughs> this is my recipe. I love these cookies. Uh, They're usually pretty popular. When you guys have made them, you've always remarked back that people really like them. They're a very sweet cookie, but they have toffee in them. And that's just not something you see in a lot of cookies. Obviously there are plenty of toffee recipes, but it's just not a common ingredient. And I love it. So I made a cookie that incorporates quite a bit of toffee so and butterscotch which i love butterscotch and i feel like you just don't get a lot of butterscotch and so <laughs> i had to bring a little butterscotch to the table then the gingerbread crinkle cookies which i liked but i don't remember loving those so maybe i'll just do like a single batch of those i don't know plus i obviously have some in the freezer and then the peppermint mocha cookies which are a huge favorite for the people that like peppermint. They are so good, they're dipped in white chocolate. They're always requested. I only make them if they've been requested and they have been requested year after year. So I will be making them again. And then from the 100 cookies book, which I really like this book, I'm gonna be doing the a chocolate chip recipe. I'm gonna do a different one from last year but still a chocolate chip recipe. And then we will also be doing the peanut butter cookie recipe out of here. And then if this feels like, okay, I still have time or blah, 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 I might throw a different cookie in here. Or maybe if you guys have a cookie that you're like, you have to try this one, definitely let me know. And I'll probably make it 
maybe later this year. And we're also, of course, gonna be doing those Taylor Swift cookies. Which that's a chai cookie. Let me get the mixer out and let's let's get mixing. I'm excited. Okay, I'm excited. This is our first Joe. I'm doubling it and already realizing I'm gonna need way more eggs because this one alone takes four eggs and that's a lot of eggs. I am gonna just leave measuring spoons inside of everything, measuring cups and all of that. I have quite a few, so I'm gonna just leave that so I don't have to clean them 10,000 times. I love it. I just love doing this. I love doing it by myself. I love that I'm home alone while it's happening. Like it really makes me, it makes me happy. It just makes me happy to do this kind of stuff. Are you guys a type that like having people like in the kitchen with you and stuff and you know, I don't know. I like having people around, don't get me wrong. Obviously I like hanging out with people. Like I loved yesterday. I spent like the whole day with Ashley. We went out to the city. It was a blast. It was so much fun. Tried a new coffee shop. That coffee shop was so amazing. It was called The Bakehouse. It's like right next to the last chapter bookshop. Uh, so if you are in the city and you go there, then there's like maybe like two doors down, there's this place called The Bake Shop and they have this horchata chai latte and it is really, really good. Um, yeah, it was really good. I will say that bookstore, it's nice. And I definitely like went in and <laughs> bought a lot purely to support it because uh, price wise, it's, you know, you're paying the price on the book and there's no deal or anything like that versus like when I go to Anderson's, which is still, Anderson's is still a small business. <laughs> um, they are a family owned shop. I believe, yeah, I believe they're still a family owned shop. Um, but you know, versus when you go there, you definitely get a bit of a discount. So it was a fun little experience and I can't wait to see what it looks like, you know, like a year from now after they've really had some time. So it's cool. I'm glad I went, but yeah, the bake shop next door. But I do like hanging out and going out and doing things like that. But I love, I love spending time by myself. I don't know. It's just, I just love hanging out with just me and my brain. What a good time. <laughs> what a good time indeed. The best part is always adding the chips. Am I right or am I right? So this one calls for one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. We're gonna do two cups. That's actually so many cups. I don't know. That's so many. Let's see, maybe we'll do one and a half cups because it's not just the semi-sweet. So that was the end of that bag. Oh wait, there's some more in there. I don't know how much this bag was, but I just know it was a much better deal because the other bags were like two, like two for seven? That's like a lot, isn't it? There's probably a better place to get those. How do I open this? Pull to open. I'm struggling. Two. Three. We're gonna do one and a half of those and then supposed to be three fourths cup butterscotch chips, which is one and a half cups of butterscotch chips. So one. And then we need one more cup. Two, three. Half cup of toffee bits, which translates to one cup of toffee bits. One, and this one is just toffee. Normally I get the chocolate and toffee, like the broken up Heath bar. This one is just straight up toffee. So I don't know how much different that's gonna be, but I'm excited to try it. I mean, that's, that's a lot, but it's, it's gonna be delicious, guys. Rest assured. We have uh, the first one done. So excited, so excited. Ah, oh, this really just makes me so happy. This is how you know it's done because the paper is now filthy. It's covered in vanilla and sugar and everything else. Put that over there. Next up, we'll just go straight down the list. We'll do the gingerbread crinkle cookies. Wait, is this the one that I have a lot of? Let's pass, let's pass on that. Let's do the peppermint mocha cookies. Love these ones. This recipe does start pretty much the same as all the others, the butter, the sugar. Uh, it has brown sugar, you cream all that together. And then this one has vanilla, just like all the others, but then it also has peppermint extract, which is what gives it that minty flavor. It's actually equal parts peppermint and vanilla extract, so there are four teaspoons total of extract in here. It's a very rich, minty cookie. And then in addition to that, when you do your dry ingredients with this one, you add cocoa powder and espresso powder to give it the mocha taste. And it is just so good. It is a thick, thick cookie dough. Very, very thick. So hopefully you guys don't hate me having um, 
the mic on today. The whole reason I have it is because I wanna be able to walk away and I kinda of wanna test how this works for when I do cooking stuff. If I can turn around and I can like go over here and I can do this and I can go over there and I can go be on the stove and like will you, you know, will the audio keep up with me or does it sound crazy? I don't know, so we'll see, we'll see. Okay, I gotta pour this in. Why is voiceover Sarah here? I'll tell you why. You notice how the mic is no longer clipped to me? Oh, you're so silly, drinking molasses, barf. Um, it's because I had to put in my AirPods because my mom called me and she was going through some family stuff. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna focus on this phone call and I'm gonna take the mic off. Well, I did. And then I was like, screw it, I'm not even gonna put it back on, whatever, they're fine. And uh, I never unplugged the transmitter for my camera. So the rest of the video had no audio. Of course, I didn't know that. But don't worry, girl, I remember everything. No, I actually clipped a lot of it out, but essentially I continued to make the cookies, right? Now these were the gingerbread crinkle cookies that I was making right here. And they're really similar to the other ones. This was obviously the end of it, it was empty. So I tasted it, this was my first taste. And I was like, wait a second, I forgot how incredible these taste. Like, did they taste this good last year? And you know what my problem was last year is that I overcooked some of them. And since I already cooked the cookies, this happened like two days ago, I already cooked the cookies. I can tell you that I made hundreds of cookies and I did not overcook a single one. And that, my friends, is on focusing. And this, my friends, is on not focusing. I did not focus and my mixer was at a really high speed and I poured in a cup of flour and it was like, psych, we're going to pour this right back out. So definitely make sure that your mixer is not going too fast when you put flour in because it will just kind of poof, it becomes like this big bowl. Anyway, just, just airborne bowl of flour. Soft gingerbread cookies with a maple glaze. These are very similar to the last ones, except that the other dough tastes better on its own. These ones taste good, but... They taste incredible with the maple icing. However, if you do not like a strong maple flavor, don't make these cookies. If you don't like any of the flavors, don't make the cookie <laughs> because the flavors are like, they really come through. This is not like, um, these recipes are very flavorful. That's why I like them because they're very distinct. You take a bite of the chai, baby, it tastes like chai. It tastes like a full chai in your mouth. It is, it's, there's no question. You take a bite of the peanut butter, is peanut butter. You take a bite of the gingerbread, is gingerbread. Like, there's no little iffy, no. It's heavy with the flavor. So, if you don't like maple, don't dip these. But if you just want a gingerbread cookie, don't make these. Make the other crinkle recipe. Because just on their own, oh my gosh, those ones taste so good. These ones taste good too, but like I said, these are about being, you know, a maple flavor. Now, because I had gotten such a late start, I actually told my kids, hey, guys, go ahead and skip your after school lesson. Just get on the bus and come home because when they have lessons, I have to go pick them up. And apparently they didn't get the message. Do you guys' as kids schools do that, too? Do they just like have a vortex over the school so that their phones don't work? Because it trips me out every time I go there and like my phone completely stops working. But anyway. They ended up going to their lesson, so I had to go pick them up. So I just decided to lay everything out. I separated the butter by the recipe. We still had the chocolate chip. We had the butter pecan. We had the sugar cookie. And we had the T-Swift cookies to do still. And that was like all the butter and all the eggs that I needed. And, you know, as I go along, once I'm done with an ingredient, I put it away. Like, okay, sorry, that was my email. But <laughs> once I am finished, I just put it away. It's just like little teeny tiny things just to kind of make cleanup easier at the end of it. But this was me taking a quick break so I could run and pick up Nala and Jay. And we're back. That's right, back home. I'm not sure what I was thinking here, but I feel like I definitely had thoughts. Remember? What? I clearly told you something. Remember? Who can lip read? I don't know what I said. <laughs> Anyway, I was obviously back home. So, um, oh, I was going to mention like total, if you take away these breaks, like me going to pick up the kids and then there's going to be one more break you're going to see in a minute. If you take that away, I want to say that I spent about seven hours doing this, maybe six, six or seven hours. So, it, you know, it wasn't nothing. But I accidentally doubled a doubled recipe. You see how much is in here? It should not be this full. But... 
that recipe for the best rolled sugar cookies, when you find it on all recipes, it's already like a double size recipe. It's a massive recipe. And in my brain, I was just so used to like double, 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 double at this point. I was already so deep into it that I was like double. And it wasn't until I was putting 10 cups of flour into my mixer that I was like, girl, you made a mistake. So this is going to make about 100 sugar cookies. And they are so good, so I'm not even mad at it. But I did have to put them into a gigantic container. But this recipe, babe, if you ever want to make any kind of rolled sugar cookie, this is the one. After that, I did the, I think it's like the brown butter chocolate chip. And the dough was incredible. The cookie was very good, but the dough made you think it was going to be like a 10. And the cookie was like a 9. I don't know what happened in the cooking process. But I had to brown that butter for so long the kids wanted to try it. And they were like, oh my gosh, mom, this dough. We're like, wow, they kept coming back for more and I wouldn't give them any. I was like, no, you got to wait till tomorrow. But I don't know if I showed you guys me flattening these bags, but if you're going to freeze your cookies, put them in a freezer bag. These aren't even freezer bags because I didn't freeze mine. But like put them in a freezer bag and flatten them out. And if you want to do it so that you can just make a cookie or two or three or four or whatever at a time, then pre-roll them or pre, you know, scoop them or whatever so that it's easy for you to just grab one or two or however many. And so this was our second little break. We decided to go to the Chris Kindle market. It was a very last minute decision. Someone wanted to go and I decided to go with them. So I took the kids and we went to the one in Aurora, which this is one of their mugs. Super duper freaking cute. I know there's a Chris Kindle market in Chicago and there's probably one near you somewhere as well, wherever you guys are. So you should look it up. It's such a good time. It's like fun. I didn't buy any um, crafts or anything like that, but I'm going to go back with my mom instead of with the kids. So the kids looked around and they were like, oh my gosh, mom, look at this. It's a chocolate Pokemon. Can I have this? Oh, mom, look, this is like a build your own music box. Da da da. And I was like, okay, well, I'm like taking mental notes. You know what I mean? So Santa Claus can go back. But um, if there's one near you, you should definitely try it out. Like the drinks were so good. They had Butterbeer at ours and they had hot chocolates. I will say it was kind of expensive because these two cups that I'm showing you, um, these two cups with hot chocolate in them, and the hot chocolate was great. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but they were about $34 for the two, which to me felt like a little much. But um, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's like a bunch of small businesses and stuff. So do what you do. They were good. So I couldn't really complain <laughs> about the flavor. But the food was really, really good. And if you guys are in this area, I would definitely check it out. I know the city has one, but the Aurora one is really nice too. And if you go at an off time, like we went like an hour before it closed. And it was like, it wasn't dead, but it was like definitely very manageable crowd versus the weekends. Oh my gosh. It's insane. But back to these cookies. So I had to do the brown butter pecan ones. I'm not a pecan fan. I'm really not. It's not my thing. I don't love it. But I enjoyed this process, just breaking them all up. You're supposed to chop them, but like literally who has the time? And I miss my little teeny tiny food processor. I, I had it like 10 years ago. I haven't bought one since then. But it was so little and it would just do all the little chopping for me. But you are supposed to toast these basically so you brown the butter and then you add the pecans and then you kind of just let them get all nice and toasty in there and try not to let them burn I burned them last year and I think that's part of the reason I really didn't like the cookie last year I mean that would definitely make sense but they came out perfect this year I will say that once the dough was done coming from someone who doesn't like pecans okay so just keep that in mind that it needed more salt so I solved this the next day because I ended up adding finishing salt to the cookie right after it came out of the oven and it really set these cookies off bro but if you don't want to have to do that and add finishing salt which is like a more expensive kind of salt um, then just go ahead and add a little bit more salt to the dough I felt like the pe or or when you're toasting them add a little more salt I feel like the pecans needed a little something or maybe it's salted pecans I don't know but those were my minimal dishes right there it really wasn't much and here's my finished product I was so excited you guys like this was obviously a lot of work um a lot of work that I love but it was a lot of work and I was just so excited to just kind of look at them once it was all done uh, it was just such a good time like you're looking at cookie dough for a roughly 300 no roughly 450 cookies here so it ain't nothing you know what I mean but it was a fun time and it's a good idea to freeze your dough if you know you're not going to use it all 
or if you just want to have cookies on demand. And as far as the math here, I was doing it for you. Um, this was eight pounds of butter, 15 pounds of flour. This was about 10 pounds of sugar, both white and brown. I did lark, lark, lark. <laughs> I did light and dark brown sugars. It was more brown sugar, I feel like, than regular sugar. And then about three dozen eggs. And then, you know, the rest. <laughs> Anyway, this was it for us, guys. Sorry about the voiceover sitch, but I made all the cookies the next day and the audio is perfect. Bye.